Though it is not mentioned in any textbook that XJF is having any Conva effect, but then I will give you some examples with which it will be very clear to say that, you know, even in SJF also we have this, uh, you know, Conva effect. It happens this way. Uh, so, if the process are all not available at the initial phase, then we are going to take the best one available and now that best one might turn out to be the worst one later. Okay. Instead of words, let me use the example. Let us say this process number and then arrival time, bus time. Okay. Now process number is 1, 2, 3. Right. And arrival time is, assume that arrival time is like this, 0, 1, 2. And burst times are, it is 20, it is 1 and it is 1. Now the same way, right? Like the last one, uh, in the last example, the same thing is going to happen. So, first one that will be picked up is at 0, time 0, I don't have any other option really. I have to pick only process P1 and it is going to finish at time 20, right? And next one that has to be picked up is by time 20, P2 and P3 are available and both of them are having the same burst, ti burst time. Uh, so remember that whenever two process have same burst time then we are going to pick up the one which is which has arrived early so previously in fcfs we have seen that whenever two process have the same arrival time we have picked up the one which is having the least process id right but here the tie breaker is uh, this one arrival time therefore there is a tie here right both the process have the same uh, burst time then in order to break it you are going to take the one with the least arrival time which is nothing but p2 P2 will be scheduled which will run till 21 and then P3 will be scheduled which will run till 22 right. So if you watch it the completion times of P1 is 20 and P2 is 21, P3 is 23 therefore the turnaround times are I told you turnaround time is difference of these two right 20, 20 and 21 and the waiting time is difference between turnaround time and burst time 0 19 and 20 right therefore average waiting time here is 39 divided by 3 isn't it 39 divided by 3 which is i think 13 so average average uh, waiting time is 13 now if we, if i have given you if i have given you the different example where instead of this if this one arrived at the last then you can definitely see that average bursting you know waiting time is going to uh, be fine which means okay why don't you take that and see see let us say process number the same process 1 2 and 3 but only difference is arrival time burst time is same 20 1 and 1 now the arrival time instead of it is you know, being arriving at 0 let us say it arrived at a different time it arrived at uh, mm, let us say time unit 2 and it arrived at 0 and it arrived at 0 right then what happens the first one that will be chosen here in this case if you do, if you draw the gantt chart can i write here if you draw the gantt chart the first one that will be shown here is uh, okay the first one that will be chosen here is P2 because you know among these two burst times there is a tie and the tie breaker is arrival time oh, arrival time is also same right ok then in this case it will be difficult so let's say arrival times are different huh? then P2 then which what is it they are at 0 and then it is 1 hmm? so at 1 what is that at time 1 only P3 is available therefore out of no option I have to take only P3 right I had no choice and now here I can finally take P1 at time 2 which is going to take 22 right then you write the completion times so completion time of P1 is 22 P2 is 1 and P3 is uh, P3 is 2 right if you observe one thing completion time will always be greater than burst time isn't it logical the reason is in order to complete a process we need to finish the burst time right completion time and burst time the relationship will be completion time will be always greater than burst time right and as well as completion time will be always greater than arrival time because a process cannot uh, you know, get finished before it arrives therefore completion time is always greater than burst time as well as uh, arrival time now turnaround time is difference between these two which is 20 here one here and one here right 
then what is the waiting time waiting time is turn around time minus burst time which is 0 0 and 0 so there is no waiting at all no process is actually waiting the reason is a uh, first zero has been p2 has been scheduled then p1 has been scheduled p3 has been scheduled as and when it arrived and as and when it has it has arrived p1 has been scheduled there is no waiting time at all so if this is the case the waiting time average waiting time is zero right so average waiting time of zero might not prove some points here but you could just make a small difference here in which is um instead of having zero and one you can give them as zero zero and then pick p2 here and p1 here then you'll get certainly some waiting time anyway what i mean to say is see this here the average waiting time is 13 and here the average waiting time is 1 for the same kind of schedule therefore even this uh, particular uh, sjf is subject to a kind of convoy effect i mean i am observing it if you are observing it just uh, understand it even though it is not mentioned there is i feel that there is convoy effect right and second thing is it is really not practical to implement it so why is it not practical first come first serve is definitely practical the reason is every process will have uh, arrival time which is definitely known before i schedule them but here every process should uh, every process will have a burst time but the problem is this burst time should be known uh, prior to execution but it is a very difficult thing how can you know the time taken to execute a process before even executing it right that is the problem therefore it is very difficult to implement uh, this practically sjf so we don't really implement sjf practically we just see um, Uh, the uh, what what can i say it is used for the performance measuring which means it is used to compare against the other ones it is going to give you the best performance in in some cases now what about the throughput throughput is number of processes that get uh, finished per unit time so here if you see this the total time taken is uh, 22 right so in this 22 in this 22 units i am able to finish three process right therefore the number of process which are uh, finished per unit time is uh, 3 by 22 and here also in this 22 i finished three that is called throughput then it so throughput is you find out the total schedule how much time did it take in this total time how many process are you able to finish that is called the throughput right so you can observe that if you observe the previous one that fcfs right and compare with other others SJF gives you the best uh, throughput possible. The reason is all the process are going to uh, get finished very fast, right? I mean, in this, in this, uh, in the case, um, it, you know, throughput. I don't know. Okay, fine. Leave this point about throughput. I'll prove it later. Okay. So for now, uh, fine. We shall take examples and see it. Don't worry about throughput at all. I'll tell you about it later.